In lesson 10, we're going to create an ASP.NET MVC project. We're going to reuse in Hibernate configuration from lesson 9. So if you haven't done it or you haven't done it in a long time, I suggest you go back and check it out. Uh, we're going to install and configure jqgrid, which is based on jQuery. And we're going to modify ASP.NET view and controller. In part 1, we're going to create the MVC project. And if you're using Visual Studio 2008, then, then you'll need to go download the ASP the ASP.NET MVC1 plugin. If you're using Visual Studio 2010, then it comes uh, with the standard installation. Uh, th then we're going to build a new project with an ASP.NET MVC web application. And I'll give you a brief overview uh, about MVC. Uh, there's a whole lot of really good resources on the on the internet, uh, so I'm going to leave you to go and and find a good example there instead of trying to uh, reproduce one here for you. And then we're going to run it. The database we're going to use for this example is the one I created in lesson one. Uh, if you don't know how to create a database using Visual Studio, uh, you can go and look at look at uh, my my lesson one, and it'll show you how to do it. If you do. Uh, you're looking at the table, the data types, and and the data. And the name of the table is company. After you have downloaded and installed the ASP.NET MVC plugin, let's do File, New, Project. And you'll have this ASP.NET MVC web application. Let's call it Lesson 10. And we let's click OK that we do want to create a test, a unit test project. So let's open our solution and explore and see what, what has been created for us. You'll see the models. The MVC stands for Models, Controllers, and Views. And you'll look at the models, and the models, models is, 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 one of the, is one of the key features, and one of the features I like the most is because in the historical web-based applications, there were many ways for passing data uh, and, and information between two web pages, like uh, session objects, query strings, and view state. And what the models does is it, it what the models directory does is it, is it kind of standardizes and gives you a more object-oriented approach and means of of passing data between uh, two uh, web pages. Your views di directory is your presentation layer. Basically, it's where you where you write your code uh, to present the data that is uh, retrieved from your controller, passed to your model, and then displayed in your view. And your controller's uh, component or directory is where you store all of your business logic. Um, and it's a really good idea because if you can have all of your business logic in a single location, you can kind of, you know, funnel yourself and funnel your unit testing into a single lo a single location. And the and the I believe that the whole MVC concept is is driven around the, the uh, unit test and uh, and test driven development because you did see as I created this MVC. Um, project that it by by default asked me if I wanted to create a unit test project along with it so I like that a lot and let's run it in part two we're going to add a company class we're going to add the company uh, XML mapping file and the web config uh, settings from uh, our lesson nine and then we're going to add the in Hibernate reference DLLs so that our our project can run. So let's add a company class. Let's right click on lesson 10, add, and let's say class, call it company. And we'll add what we had in lesson 9. So let's add our in Hibernate mapping file for our, our company class. Let's add new item, XML file, and we'll call it company.hbm.xml. Let's paste what we did in our lesson 9 and save it. It's very important that in the properties for, for the file, let's cl click on the property on the file 
that in the build action you select embedded resource. It's very important. Go and make a reference to our in Hibernate library. Let's go where we installed it in lesson nine. Required bins. I like to add all of these. And then in order to get our lazy loading to work, I use castle. And we need to in hibernate bytecode castle. Click OK. Let's put our uh, our in, in hibernate configuration parameters in our web.config file. If you remember from from lesson nine, we we you know put these in our in our company class file, or actually we put it into the form uh, one class file. And uh, by doing that, it can't be reused if we want to call uh, in hibernate. Uh, methods from uh, from other classes, and so if we put it in the web config in the web config file, then we then it can be uh, used by all of the of the methods that we want to use within in Hibernate. A thing to note is that uh, we we need to use the web.config file in the root directory. There is also a web co a web config file um, within the in the views directory and we don't want to use that one we, we definitely want to use the the one in the the web dot config file in the root d directory so let's, let's scroll down we do want to put it inside of the configuration tag so let's put it right here and you'll see we have our our, our dialect which is basically our driver uh, our connection string I'm going to create a create a connection string down here in a moment uh, and then the the provider, which is the in in Hibernate, and then which uh, proxy factory in the in the assembly, and the show SQL is just for you know if we want to look at the SQL that the in Hibernate uh, ORM is creating for us, we set this here to be true, and in the connection strings area, we want to create a connection string with the name lesson ten MSSQL, which is the same as the one we identified here. 